Good morning. This is one of possibly hundreds of messages, kind of an ongoing coaching for members of the Ultimate Black Belt Test and for people who are fans or long distance students or admirers of the program. For me, the test isn't a day, it's not an event, it's not something you bought, it's not something you put on your wall. It's an ongoing dialogue about how to make the process of our training more effective, more important, more relevant uh, about our life rather than just calling it a black belt test. I kind of like this idea that uh, my black belt test is my life. My life is my black belt test, right? Why are we separating the two when really to be the ultimate black belt test, to be the ultimate black belt, it's not something uh, you open up and use once in a while. It's just something you become. You become focused. You become fit. You become uh, disciplined. You become respectful. It's who you are. It's what the black belt test is about. And uh, we, of course, we use the black belt test as something in, in the future that we're working for, that we have to climb towards, yeah? All the people who are watching this video who are part of the test, I know you're a teacher. I recognize that. So the ultimate black belt test and your journaling and recording of the process is simply another way for you to teach. You can, you can talk about it, you can show it, and you can live it. And so your video camera and your written blog are ways for you to talk about uh, what you want to teach from a very personal place, from a, from a first person perspective. I'm watching my diet and avoiding these things for these reasons. Now, it's almost the same as you saying, watch your diet and avoid these things, but you're personalizing it. And you show yourself running the stairs or practicing your Kali or doing jujitsu or doing any kind of conditioning. It's kind of like you're turning to your students and saying, practice harder, you know, do your conditioning. It's just another thing, but it's a better thing than teaching because it benefits you and it benefits the people that you're trying to influence, seeking to influence. Another aspect of the ultimate black belt test is that, uh, you know, we all have people in our sphere of influence. Well, the nature of this program that we put it on the web, that all of us collectively have a, a rather large martial arts audience. You know, a lot of instructors all over the world stumble across my stuff as they might yours. So it, you have a chance of widening your sphere of influence and you're a different age than I am, you're a different skill level, you're in a different city, you have different practices. So it's not just me trying to say, hey, you could do this to improve. Now it's all of us and someone may have better rapport with you than they have with me. They may relate to you because you're the same body type or they know you or they met you. We have a chance to bring good ideas to the uh, international martial arts community and your black belt test and how you go about it and the duration of it and what it contains ought to have a lot of good ideas. And if it doesn't, better look at that. Yeah. Uh, what I like about the ultimate black belt test is it's not me dictating everything to you. In other words, I take my best ideas and force them upon you to prove how good they are or because they work for me. This is more about your good ideas and your good ideas, and your good ideas. And uh, we share. And uh, you have a certain thing that you're following, a regime. Well, I would expect it to be different than mine. I would expect your passions to be different. The only thing that stands out for all of us as the high watermark is that we do the best we can and that this is a humanitarian mission. I'm tired of black belt tests being about the skills of the practitioner. Let's just say that's a given. What else are we capable of? How are we affecting the lives of others? The ultimate black belt test is when it's not about you, hardly at all, and about what you do that affects the people in your, your sphere of influence and perhaps now because of this approach, the ever widening sphere of your influence. Now, the only way that I'm going to 
know about what you do and why it's cool and why all of your training and your education, your ideas and your innovation, all that make a difference is because you put your stuff down in writing and on video. If you don't do that, then you're doing great work, but you're locked in a room somewhere and only a small group of people are seeing you and it isn't going to really affect my life or the lives of the people in my sphere of influence. You must become transparent, more transparent. That way you stand a chance of improving the lives of many, many people that you might not ever meet who nevertheless are going to see what you're doing because of the way we're approaching the test, making it public and journaling about our progress for an extended period of time. When you journal, not only does your work affect those who are watching it immediately, but it stands as a body of evidence that people will be able to go to and discover later and maybe follow the, the path of something you did a long time ago, but that still nevertheless is made up of sound ideas. Ideas like anger management, ideas like community service, ideas like uh, your diet is self-defense. The idea of like this whole thing about 50,000 push-ups. Well, 50,000 push-ups, of course, it's going to have an effect on your physique, but it's not about push-ups at all. It's about the power of doing small daily things and how they accumulate to become big things, whether you're writing a book or cultivating relationships, building a business. It's all about the daily effort which accumulates into something massive down the road. And learning to talk about that is very important. Now, my final bit of instruction for you today is to write and video about your test as if you were talking to the kid I was when I really started martial arts. Between 9 and 12 years old and they're watching your stuff and they're listening to you and they're reading and they, they take it in hook, line, and sinker. With no filter, you're addressing an audience that believes in their potential because you're going to cultivate that through showing them what you do and why you do it and the motivation behind it. And those kids will, will grow up in a martial arts community with a different vision of what it's all about. Not just the techniques we saw in the magazines, right? Not just what we saw in the movies, but here you are a real life person talking about things that every 9 and 12 year old should be exposed to. Courtesy, integrity, focus, concentration, service to others, effort, staying focused. I think you know the story. Uh, until we talk again.